Okay, so this is requested by Ketzel. Um, because I told them what we were doing today, and they were like, yeah, I'm cool with missing that. Um, they want to know, what would we do with our gallstones? Oh, wow. Okay. And they said jewelry, so we can't pick that. We have to do something else. But I already talked to them about this. That's what we were going to do. We were going to preserve them. Yeah, but Ketzel yeah. wants you to pick something else. Oh, I have to do something else with the gallstone? Yeah. which I was like, dude, I don't fucking know. Just keep well, I, I feel like they should have probably specified what kind of jewelry. That way be like, okay, you can't make a ring out of it. No, they said jewelry, period. Because I was like, dude, you said necklace. Are there multiple gallstones? So that's why it's yeah. like a whole like earring, yeah. and a necklace, bracelet set. You, did you Google it? I did no, I Google sure did not. I just I looked what, oh at whatever they sent us and I'm oh like, gosh. I'm fine with that. And then you're like, you have bubbles in you. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> they did have bubbles. And then the boba comment. <laughs> I can never have boba ever again. I've never, it's I wonder what boba. they, well, firstly, I don't know. Don't ask, don't even What do say they it. feel like? Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they like squishy because, or you are know, they crumbly, or are they like solid? So now we're eating I them. I think the. No, we're not eating them. I just want to know what's the I kind of want to chew on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. You're, you're a big dude. <laughs> Take your dogs and leave. You're done. Um. I think it's a shame that Kenzel can't keep them. At I'm like they're. I'm like, like they're a part. Of, they're a part whoa, of you. Whoa, whoa. There's my like, body, my choice. I told some, them that. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. There's some <laughs> animal. <laughs> there's some animal things and some like human things that doctors do allow you to keep. I'm surprised that that's like Not what is lot. that? Um, it's a shame. No jewelry, right? No, no jewelry. I mean, can I use it for anything else? Like, there's no like. There's no limits, right? Are you going to cook with it? No, God, no. <laughs> no, no. Put it in some soup. <laughs> oh, stone soup. <laughs> Call stone <No>. soup. <laughs> what a deep cut <laughs> to a previous episode. That's what episode. cannibals do, dude. When the people, they have gallstones. They make gallstone soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting, you guys. Um, do you think they shred them up? <laughs> do you think they like boil them I don't, I have no do they idea. crack open like eggs see i don't know i i wish i knew the consistency they're obviously hard but are they if like he was here they would google it and tell us what's what's the dealio now they're getting that removed right now as we speak um i mean uh decor would you do something with decor with it I just start a nice little rock collection. <laughs> ooh, ooh, Cute. Ooh. I'll make. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> <laughs> the most strange cute I've ever heard. Cute. <laughs> we'll put it in like, we'll use it to adorn like the handle or the hilt of a sword or something. Or a yeah, or like put it on like um, the knobs in the cabinets. Just glue them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> How many stones were in that patch? Dude, have you seen? Have you Googled it? Google it? Oh my God. Google golf oh God, stones. They're going to show it to me. I did too. And I was like, Ugh. I was like, ew, uh-huh. those are in you, dude. <laughs> That's the disturbing. only thing more terrifying than that is like a picture of like teeth in a skull. Ugh, I hate Before that. like. There was like one case or like picture of like there being 82 or some random ass fucking number of teeth in some kid's like skull somewhere. And so they had to surgically remove them all. Uh. Uh, They're like rocks. Oh They're my rocks God. They, that looks like weird seeds. That looks like the seeds you put oh on a gosh, very like I saw the picture of like vegan the diet. actual like gallbladder and like just packed filled with stones. It's like a little like. You know, a little, little, a little sack. satchel, oh, <laughs> a little sack of stones. You know when you go to like gift shops and they're yeah, like, stuff like that. Get the get the stones, get the gems, and put them in the satchel. Ooh, <laughs> it's like the it's like those uh giant trays of um like stones, and you're like fill up a bag. Exactly, yes. <laughs> and then it's your gallbladder. <laughs> the gift shop is your gallbladder. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I guess what I would do with them is like maybe make a little terrarium with them. A little terrarium? <laughs> a little terrarium? Do like some terrazzo flooring with your gallstones. <laughs> sure. It matches my gallstones. <laughs> the ultimate friendship bracelet. I made them myself. <laughs> I made them myself. <laughs> From scratch. Wink. Also, it's kind of weird we saw the inside of Ketzel. That was very personal. I was like, dude, that's you. That's inside you. That's weird. That's your body. They have bubbles. <laughs> in them. They have bubbles in them. Yeah. They look like like the popping boba, like the mango popping boba. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh. Next time I go to yogurt land, I'm still going to get them, though. <laughs> and pop them. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, by the way, Ketzel's getting their gallbladder removed. That's why we're talking about this. If that wasn't clear enough. Yeah. Anyway, good luck, Ketzel. We'll see you in the next episode. Maybe? No! (laughs) I was going to say it, (laughs) but I didn't want to. Say it, say it, say it. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Sit Down, Loser. We're watching a movie. My name's Dahlia. I'm Sky. I'm Antonio. And Ketzel's gone. (laughs) And Ketzel's not here. You already knew that. Oh, it's me. <laughs> you really? I thought you were reading out. I'm like, I'll give him a minute and, and take it. And we're just four serial killers with boners for encrypted messages who watch movies that everyone else has watched. Except one of us is a loser who hasn't. Today, we're watching a movie that stars Iron Man, Mysterio, and the Hulk before the MCU. Zodiac, released in 2007, directed by David Fincher. And today's loser is... It's me! Dahlia! Of course it's me. <laughs> I think so you've been the loser the last, like, <laughs> everyone's couple like, episodes. Just trying to have get... you ever seen a movie before in your life? <laughs> have you ever seen a film? <laughs> have you ever had a dream? <laughs> Where you... And you... <laughs> have you ever watched a movie that felt like it was a, a movie? movie? Mm? Mm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's the Genre Geeks episode. Uh? <laughs> Small um, shout out to genre geeks. Sky and Dolly will both be appearing as what, special guests. Yeah. yeah, it comes out this Monday. This coming Monday. So it should already be out by the time you guys hear, hear this, this one. one. Yeah. Ah! Very cool. Eek. Go <laughs> listen to it. Genre geeks are so funny. We <laughs> we got to talk with AJ. Um, but yeah, go listen to that on, on Genre Geeks podcast. Um, but yeah, it's me. It's me. Another David Finchie film. It's exciting. I know is that's that not why his we name. picked this. Yeah. So no. why did we pick this? <laughs> so it is another David Fincher flick, and it's not the last one either. Wink. We have another one coming up on mm-hmm. Z list. Wonk. Y'all love this guy. How many? Uh, what is this going to be? The fourth film after Gone Gal? No. The third, right? Mm. We did Social Network, this one, and then Gone Girl. Oh no! I'm thinking of the other guy from. Mixing him up with uh, "Call Me by Your Name," which is not that was Luca. Okay, could That's you imagine so if David off. Fincher Sorry. directed <laughs> "Call Me by Your Name"? And Tony was like, "I would watch that." Army sure Hammer would. would actually be a cannibal. He'd yeah. play a cannibal. He he'd have to stop method acting, or is it method acting? He would. Well, it's not method acting. It wouldn't be. It, he'd be his true self. It's no. It's just method. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a documentary at that point. It's just method living. <laughs> Eep. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of David Fincher, uh, true crime realness. That is the second reason why. I actually am not a big true crime person. I that still surprises me. Yeah. Because I think I knew that about you already. I like just don't do it. I don't do it. I get bored. I'm just like, eh, it's, it's real. Whatever. But it was real life. A real, real life. story. It's a real life story. They did this. People died. Antonio. I don't care. <laughs> Antonio people died. <laughs> I said I don't care. <laughs> I said what I said. Okay. But I mean, I am a, a true crime uh, person. You as well, Sky. So that's like, it's exciting. I mean, I know the Zodiac Killer story and that he's never been caught. And if you guys don't know that already, like, that's not spoilies at all. Yeah. So true crime. Uh, I feel like lately it's been kind of crazy i was talking to you about this on friday like the whole jeffrey dahmer series on netflix people are being really fucking weird about it uh bring me up to speed uh ryan murphy's show about jeffrey dahmer it's like is that it's the one with evan peters yeah oh i like a dramatized i thought for entertainment a a film and not a series it's a series series it's like a limited series People what? Are being weird, really weird people are really it. weird about true crime in general. Actually, people are just really weird about like crime in general. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I mean, as a person that's kind of like listened, we, I used to listen to my my favorite murder, and then like you know just keeping up with that after watching SVU, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> knowing the stories. Like, I feel like I've I've heard it and seen it all. You know, it's like really hard to be surprised, which is kind of a fucked up thing to say. Truly, but like now that murder has or not murder, but true crime has gone into mainstream. I feel like you know people that don't normally touch upon it are like, that's not right. And I'm just like, it's fucked up. That's why we're watching it so we can learn. 
But yeah. are people being think, weird for other like, reasons? I think the problem is like <laughs> when it's, it's always been glamorized. Though it's when true it's crime gla- has always been glamorized. It's glamorized, why you have like forty-eight hours, like Ted and, Bundy and Dateline. Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Dom- like now, Jeffrey Dahmer because um, Evan Peters is playing him. So everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's kind of hot." And it's like, well, well, you're <laughs> looking at Evan Peters, the actor, <laughs> well, not Jeffrey Dahmer, the man. I don't know. People are just being weird about it. I will say this, though. I haven't seen the Ryan Murphy show at all, and I honestly am like, mm, kind of weird that Ryan Murphy would do that. But <laughs> so tired I of Ryan do Murphy. really like My Friend Dahmer. That was a good, that was a good that movie. That was with Ross Lynch. Yes. Okay. Ross but that's Lynch. because it didn't glamorize him in any way. At all. It was just no, it was his friend telling the story. Friend. Exactly. Because was it, it was a graphic novel. I get, yeah, because his uh, friend grew up to be a graphic novelist. That was a good movie. It was, I, do, I did enjoy that. Out. it's a really good one okay. if anything maybe we should watch that <laughs> Ooh, okay so yeah true crime realness coming into the limelight people not be liking it i guess i guess i still like true crime i just don't like that this is unsolved <laughs> i don't think anyone likes that it's unsolved god i hope it's so very complicated this one this one's very interesting to me just because it's so crazy so many different places and don't you love like encrypted shit yeah i do i do like a good code and everything like that but so um, all we know antonio could have been the zodiac killer <laughs> we don't know zodiac two <laughs> yeah the guy took over zodiac jr <laughs> zoju <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> What, what is the third thing? Um, it has an all-star cast. I will say that uh, if this movie has anything, it's definitely got an all-star cast. Which um, I actually don't know that much about like the uh, the release or the reception of this movie. Was it like nominated for anything? Oh, you know what? I forgot to look that up. I meant to look that up to add that to this, but I didn't. So I'll look it up right now. All right. I'll be honest. I actually don't really remember this movie. There's no sprinkle for me. Oh, shit. Well, I like, I've seen it and I can remember some parts, but for me in particular, this movie is like, mm, I've seen it once and if this is the last time I ever see it again. It's a one and done. She's a one and done. For me. Hmm. How many times have you watched it? Because I feel like you watched it a lot whenever it like makes its way onto like streaming I'll services. Watch it. I love this movie, even though it is really long. <laughs> I it's really like, like it. Lord of the Rings. I really like so it, even hour? though, like, I know how it ends, because, like, but I'm like, this time this time they're going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> so... <laughs> they're going to find him this time. They're going to get him this time. You put your little feet in right into the story. You're like, I'm with you here, Jake Gyllenhaal. I, I don't know anything about the movie, so I'm assuming that you know, he's an okay guy, but who knows? This was not nominated for anything. At all. Interesting. No, just, like, other, like, awards. But not like the the main ones. Would you say it was snubbed as many times as Antonio said that Amy Adams from Arrival was snubbed? Um, I don't know. It's just one of those movies. If it's not a yes, it's a no. I mean, I like all of David Fincher's movies and they all kind of have the same feel. David Finchie, David Lynchy. Mm. I don't know anything about David Fincher. I got to look up his directing style. We could do that during the break. Did you see Fight Club? Yes. You did Fight Club too. Gritty then. Mm-hmm. Oh, so this is going to be like, a great I've never really seen Fight Club from beginning to end or paid attention to it. Yeah. I feel like people glamorize it a lot. But I only seen it it's that one like, time. It's it, just it, like American Psycho where, yep. th- where the straights take it and they're like, yeah. And where it's like, no. It, it, Fight Club was written by a gay man. This is my personality. Same with American Psycho, and it's just like y'all are miss- y'all are missing the point. It's like, but did but did you see this? What are the three? I feel like there's like the three horsemen of the apocalypse: American Psycho, Fight Club, and then what was oh, that? There's Pulp Fiction. Mm. Oh, that's is it that Pulp is Fiction? One. I, I feel like Pulp that Fiction. counts. Yeah, no, that but is one of them. But if there's there's a fourth horseman, who who would you think is so a, those oh. three? And then oh, Wolf on Wall Street, right? Is that it? Uh, that one doesn't. I mean. Sounds about right for newer generations, sure, but I don't think that's like one of the like the classic. I was going to say oh, American like, History works. X. Is that the one that I was thinking of? I Maybe. think that was the with one with the Nazis. 
I've never seen it, but I know that I've heard the name. And anytime someone talks about it, I'm just like, I'm good. Seriously. Um. All right. I guess we can move on to the scores. Or no, 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 no. What, what, do, you what do you know about this movie? Um. Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. Um, Cute. The Zodiac Killer Cute. is a killer. Cute. Who doesn't get caught. Cute. <laughs> but that's truly just a true crime. Spoiler episode. alert, Dahlia. <laughs> oh, my pretty- God. How does it go? Oh my god, get out! Shut up! Stop! <laughs> get, out, that... get out, get out, get <laughs> out! From when uh, Q... I just had a bubble too. When Q uh, spoiled Arrival for you. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> god, this is an, another episode. Just every every episode in sequence since then has been... God, Dolly, I remember when you totally beat up Ketzel. Like, verbally? Yeah, I remember that. I was there. So here I am again. Physically. <laughs> here I am once again. <laughs> torn into pieces. Um, Someone's torn into pieces. Ketzel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Gyllenhaal. Um, Mark Ruffalo Ruffles is in it. And I, I wasn't just reading the list. I, I knew he was in it. Um, I feel like visually i remember some things about the movie the cinnamon toast crunch because i'd seen like some previews of it because i'm like i'll watch that someday and i never did (laughs) typical and it was like dark and moody and broody and mark ruffalo is mad and i don't know what jake gyllenhaal was doing but i just saw his eyes and i'm like okay (laughs) and that's it that's it yeah okay okay i mean it seems like it's an adventure from beginning to end it's a journey. It's a movie. Um, all right. Now we can move on to the <laughs> scores. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes gave it a ninety percent. Uh, audiences wow. gave it a seventy-seven, and then Google users gave it a ninety-one. So the Tamadis people went all in for this. They said yes, 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 because that's that's pretty awesome. Matching kind of Google scores, mm-hmm. audience. I'm a little surprised at that. I mean, I'm with is, the audience on this one. This is a Rotten Tomatoes audience? Yeah. Saying it's a C. It's a high yeah. C. Whoa. Oh, I mean, no, I think it's a B. I think it's an overall B. Yeah, I mean, when you put those together, it's yeah. a B. The average is yeah. a B. It's a the B. average is a B. And I'd say that's accurate. Accurate. Okay. Well, that, does, that gives me a little bit of uh, some semblance of what this movie could be like. Yeah, I mean, if... You know, I mean, we can get into it afterwards. But. Okay. I feel like there's so much. Like, I, I have to watch it because then you're like, okay, and then this, and then that, and then this, and then that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then that. There's murder in <laughs> oh, this? Oh, fuck. I didn't, even write that, I didn't even write that down in the summary, but. You'll remember it. I know, because I'll bring it's it up. It's like one of the only things I, like, remember out of this movie. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm so Trauma excited. Trauma mama. Oh, no. Okay, well, who's in this movie? Uh, what did you say? Jake, Jacob Gyllenhaal. Jacob Gyllenhaal. Hall. Uh, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Mar- oh. Mark Ruffalo, and then Chloe. Is it Chloe, Chloe Sevigny? Sevigny. Sevigny. That's which cool. is uh her second appearance for us because she was an American Psycho. That's right. And you know I like she her. Was the She's like the spooky queen. His she was assistant. also mm-hmm. in a party monster. It's like when uh, Reese Witherspoon was in that movie, I was like, oh. Yeah, I always forget she's in it, and then she pops up, and I'm like, there Reese? She is. There in she my is. movie? Reese I mean, in my American Psycho red flag movie? More likely than you think. Truly. So that's that's interesting. I mean, this is like the queen of spooky movies, I think, right? Chloe, she's like in all the like the weird culty classic B movies. Is she? Maybe. She was also in a... In a American Horror Story also. She was. She was? She was in Hotel. two seasons? Hotel and... Asylum. Yeah, she was in Asylum. As? Uh, I think another person. Another patient. Yeah. Hmm. Deep cut, huh? Makes you want to watch it again. Remember. Not particularly. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't like that season, so no. <laughs> I do watch Hotel like every year, though. So She is in Hotel. Coven's always the best. It is. I mean, there's no refuting that, disputing that at all. And anyone who wants to fight me, we can meet on the streets. Do you know my handle? You know my Instagram handle. Watch out. 
Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's all I know. Then uh, I'm excited to see how these actors act their little asses off, especially Robert Downey Jr., who I completely forgot or did not know was in this movie. I wonder if he's a cop. He's probably not a cop. Oh, no. Let's find out. <laughs> when we <laughs> when I was telling Dolly, I was like, oh, we could do Zodiac. Dolly was like, oh, my God, I'm excited. But don't tell me anything. And she was like, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal might be the Zodiac. But don't tell me. And I was like, Dolly, you know he was never caught, right? <laughs> they don't know who he is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay. I'm I'm excited to watch this. I really want to know what the fuck you guys are all like. <gasps> and what this trauma mama is. It's I gotta trauma know. mama. Okay. All right. Bye. What? Huh? <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to Back to Blunch, <laughs> a segment in this podcast where we um what do we do? What do we do here? <laughs> we eat and talk. We eat and talk and vibe. So it's basically the same as our podcast, but no, no movies movie. <laughs> and no Dolly and Antonio. I think it's really a propaganda for me to try to convince people on Blunch, for me to make this a thing. If we ever have merch, I want Blunch merch. How's that croissant? Which, oh, we're eating Burger King today. It's pretty good. Not Burger King. I had us convinced, at least had me convinced with their fucking little hash brown bits, mm-hmm. which tastes like a... McDonald's hash brown bottom, tiny little Dunkin' Donuts-esque uh, sizes. I, I always have to scoop out the little bits of cheese on a wrapper. Just eat the wrapper. This guy. One cannot eat a wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be fucking crazy. Rhymes with Whopper. Damn. Wendy's is the best. Oh, Wendy's is the best, but is, do you think Burger King breakfast is better than McDonald's? Really? It's pretty bold. A lot of folks out there that love McDonald's breakfast. I think it might be. The thing is, like, this body was molded by McDonald's. <laughs> you know, body by McDonald's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, like, there's something about, like, a sausage McMuffin that just, like, just will always hit. And the hash browns just will always The fucking hash browns. I think this is a common conversation of, like, what is a McGriddle? And I think they're meant to taste like pancakes, but the thing is, it's, like, it's like a bun with like just the flavor granules of a pancake in it. It's so good. Because it's so embedded in there. No, people love McGriddles. I do not like a McGriddle. I don't know why. I think it's probably the sweetness. You should have it with the spicy chicken. I mean, I, I would fuck. I'd fuck that. I mean, I would, yeah. So you would <laughs> fuck your food. <laughs> I wouldn't. <sighs> Nicole Byer says it best. People think fat people uh, get horny for food, but sometimes the food does make this kind of fucking. No, that's not the conversation we yeah. were having last night. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to lead and lead. Sometimes food makes you horny. <laughs> you know? You guys were fucking on one last night. <laughs> it's not a fuckable food. I don't think I'd fuck a food. There's no. yeast infections. But food does, depending on the food, can, can make you horny. I ever had a food that was so good made you horny? I don't know. You haven't lived. I'm just happy. Ninety nine percent of the time, it's about happiness. But sometimes, if, like you know, there's foods that are aphrod- they're aphrodisiacs. Hmm. There's foods that are aphrodisiacs. Yeah. Like, you know, oysters. Is the big yeah, leader. I don't think French toast sticks from Burger King <laughs> are aphrodisiacs. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Be like, mm. Mm. I mean, <laughs> no, they're not. But they might be. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch, they might be. Bitch, they might. You know? You know, there's happy. There's like, you eat a food and then you're happy. Okay. There's, yeah, you do. I think my favorite is, that's one of my favorite things about being a human is when you do a little happy dance because the food's so good and you go like, <laughs> you do a little wiggle. I have favorite experience. I think only like, um, mentally ill people do that. Wiggling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold, go on. <laughs> Because everyone I know has mental illness, and we all do mental that. Illness. But, but I'm pretty sure, like, other normal people don't do Maybe that. 
I think it's our body being like the sudden burst of serotonin. Like, oh, <laughs> and we're like, we have to do some. Like, my body doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about being human. The wiggly, looking at the moon. The s- <laughs> <laughs> I have a top five. I haven't thought of the fifth one. But I have four. It's when you, if food's so good, it makes you a wiggle. Um, looking at the moon, because she is sweet. Um, popping champagne bottles. And when the dogs, when dogs um, smell something in the air and do a little, do a little sniffy. You know what I mean? I go, yeah, humans don't do that, though. No, my favorite things about being a human, not not like being a human. My favorite things about being alive, and like a human so in the world. So seeing that, yeah, makes you happy. it oh. makes me so happy. It's like my top five, like my favorite things to do as a human. You know, sometimes it's I nice forget to be alive. how gay you and Antonio are till you say <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> that was just make you happy. Just happy to be alive. Antonio has a fucking uh that fucking quote no that's just real gay though <laughs> it's like it's not about it's not about it's <laughs> something not, learning to dance in the rain something it, like that it's like something like not about like getting swept in the storms about learning to dance in the rain that's i think that's exactly what it is or along those lines but it's that it's the gayest shit i've ever fucking seen yeah i forget sometimes i think he does <laughs> shit like that and i'm like oh well it just <laughs> It just sounds like a computer trying to process human emotion. <laughs> well. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for today's lunch. Join us tomorrow where we eat Taco Bell. You've never had Taco Bell breakfast? I've never on? had Taco Bell breakfast. I'm very excited. Well, this won't be tomorrow, but join us next episode. Tomorrow for us. Guys, yeah. we're, we're also like doing this consecutively. So, if one of us needs our stomach pumped by the fourth lunch, uh, don't be surprised. Taco Bell is not Mexican food. No, Taco Bell is Taco Bell. Taco Bell is Taco Bell, but Taco Bell slaps. Taco Bell is slaps. That's where you're drunk? They're Crunchwrap. Crunchwrap Supreme. Baby, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
the end. Sick. So <laughs> a month later, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle uh, receives an encrypted or receives encrypted letters uh, from a killer calling himself Zodiac. Uh, who threatens to kill dozens of people unless his message is decoded, which contains his identity. Right. Robert Graysmith, who's a political cartoonist at the paper, who is also Jake Gyllenhaal, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, correctly guesses that his identity will not be in the message, but Noam takes him seriously. Um, and I fucked this up. And he... <laughs> Oops. He <laughs> is excluded from details about the killing, so he's like not in any of the important meetings um in the office um, but a married couple deciphers one of the letters that are published yeah it was some wild shit so like these letters were sent in and they're like what do we do let's call the police and the police is like oh no not you guys too and you know because they were sending he was sending ciphers to a bunch of different yeah. publications so we just fo- we are focusing on, on the, the chronicle for a bit san fran chronicle chronicle sfc and yeah, like, I, I feel bad a little bit for for Robert, because uh, nobody, nobody does take him seriously, literally the entire time. And that's kind of sad. And they give him a terrible nickname. I don't like that. But, you know, as a, a true journalist, and he was a cartoonist, a true journalist at the Chronicle, as he was turning to be, he was very nosy and snoopy, and he's like, I gotta find out more. But uh, honestly, like, it's, it's like, what, like, late 69, um, 70s, there's nothing to do. He's like, let me put my little nosy in here. Let me find out some things. But, I mean, I appreciated that. I liked following his story. I mean, he was kind of annoying. He was I kind of, yeah. I see how everyone was like. So, is, he's a real person? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a real person. And he was really that annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. told me so. <laughs> 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 Yeah, did he? Did he call you up and tell you that? Yakif <laughs> I, have per- <laughs> I have his personal number. Right after I love you 3000, he's like, Dahlia? <laughs> I met Robert Graysmith. He's annoying. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, okay. Robert Downey Jr. is working closely, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, with Robert Graysmith, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie. In September, <laughs> Zodiac... Uh, ends up stabbing two law students, Brian and Cecilia, at Lake Ber- Berryessa? Berryessa. Berryessa in Napa County. Cecilia dies two days later. Did so, Brian die? Like, that should, no, he no, survived. Both, he both guys survived. So like in these so two lover's instance. lane type of situations, both women die, but the men survive. And it's like wild because later in the movie they're like oh he was so focused on killing the women he didn't even give a fuck about the men it was really sad yeah that part the this part in the lake Berryessa, um i always thought this part was rough too it is i didn't i didn't like like watching it it kind of scared me the first time i saw this movie i was like oh and then another part that we'll get to later also scared me (laughs) and i was like oh yeah and that's rough and he stabs the shit out of her. He, oh my god, the fact that they showed that to like, us, I he was just like, went like ee, ee, to Brian, and then he went ham on Cecilia, which is like, oh. I I didn't even know that she died two days later. That's almost insane. So she was like in horrible, horrible pain. Zodiac wasn't messing around. Uh, so Paul Avery, who is ro- played by Robert Downey Jr., he's a crime journalist for the San Francisco Chronicle. And Robert discussed the coded letters, and some of Robert's insights are helpful, such as uh, Zodiac's reference to man as the most dangerous animal of them all, which is in reference to the most dangerous game, which is a book and a movie. Yeah. Yep. Did you guys ever read it? In high school, yeah, actually. I think I don't, I don't know if I read, like, the full book or so much as just, like, an excerpt from it, from, like, a textbook. Is it Was good? It? Yeah, it was really good. It was a, a, a little disturbing now that I think about it in, in uh, middle school. But yeah, the, the I remember the teacher. We Wait, were you read that in middle school? I read that in middle Damn. school. Um, it was like in the seventh grade or something. I it would was, think that'd be a like a high school book. It was a little rough. Um, yeah, definitely not. It was. I remember because it was at my middle school. Um, I went to high school in a different part of town. But yeah, it was some wild shit. So yeah, basically he says it in the movie like. 
uh, this billionaire, whatever, this rich person owns an island and then people get shipwrecked. It's rigged to get people shipwrecked. Anybody who lands on the island, he's like, oh my God, let me wine you and dine you. But he does not 69 them. He was like, no, you got to go. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 whoa <laughs> But wine, whoa. dine, and 69. I get it, I get it, I get it. But it's all like, about rhyming. It's like, no, no, no. You're going to go into the, <laughs> the jungle and you're going to fend for yourself and uh, I'm going to come after you. And then the guy's like, wait, what? And then he's, yeah, he's I'm like, gonna, bye. I'm going to come after you. Um, So good luck. But I'm just so tired of hunting animals. Like, I'm hunting people now. Because y'all are, like, quirky and you know how to hide. So I like to find you. It's, like, so funny. Just in a silly, goofy mood. Yeah, just in a <laughs> silly, goofy mood. <laughs> Basically. But that shit's a little rough. Like, it's really interesting that they put that together. I didn't know that piece about Zodiac, the true crime background that i have anyway but yeah it's really like just mm, very interesting for a second i was just like mm, is mr robert kind of in on this but maybe he's just he's like i like puzzles i was a boy scout and i'm like okay good for you good for you but robert downey jr in this case let me just talk about his ascot real quick <laughs> i liked it that's all i have to say <laughs> Let me, like to <laughs> Let me take you to my fashion. Let me take you to my fashion corner. I liked it a lot. Back to you guys. He was he was like cute, you know. He was very well dressed, like you know, pretty. Uh, I don't know, well, well kept or not groomed. unkempt. Yeah, he was well groomed. groomed in the beginning. Let's make that clear right now because at this time he was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mr. I'm just Robert. doing my bestest work ever. I'm just living my best life. Mr. Robert, you don't know anything. I'm the journalist here. I write the articles. And then Robert's like, sure, 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 absolutely. You're right, Mr. Sir. I read your articles all the time. And then throughout the movie, Robert Downey Jr., who is Paul Avery, who writes the articles from the Chronicle, he uh, gets less cute and does not wear an ascot and shows off his very meaty thigh. You guys saw it. I don't know if I did. <gasps> okay. I kind of checked out. That's Parts. Oh, okay. He was showing his little meaty thigh and his little sandals, and I was like... Mm, there were some parts that I was like, mm, nice, but I don't know about meaty thighs and sandals. To me, it was Mark Ruffalo, but we'll get to that in a oh, second. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so what scrummy. happens next? So scrummy. What happens next? Uh, Let's see. Two weeks later in San Francisco, a taxi cab driver. He, uh, His name is Paul Stein. He's shot and killed in Presidio Heights and... That's like a shishi part of town. So they're like, this don't happen here. And then the Zodiac mails pieces of Paul's bloody shirt to the Chronicle because you see that happen. Um, and then along with a, a letter. And the San Francisco police um, and these investigators, which is Dave Toshi, right? Toshi? Tos to Toski? Toski. 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 Uh, who's played by Mark Ruffalo and his partner Bill Armstrong are assigned to the case. And then they work closely with Vallejo Popo, Jack Molinax, and Captain Ken Narlo in Napa. And it's interesting to note here, because of our true crime past, that, you know, not in the before times, you know, computers were exist existing, but not everybody was, like, communicating with each other interdepartmentally. Sure, they were all in the same area of California, but those are across counties, and counties don't share info. So... It was kind of fucking wild to see this scene that was happening when they're trying to work all together of this guy calling every single county to find out pieces of information. One guy had this. One guy had that. That's a fucking lot. Well, it's because there was no internet and they barely had faxes. And it's just like mind blowing to me now because it's like we have a whole database, right? Like the whole the database has all the information coming from different states. So now you can I easily identify things from, you know, cross state lines, counties, etc. And back then, they had to call. Some of them didn't even have fax. Pro you guys probably don't even know what the fuck a fax is. I never used the fax. Maybe one time. It was it's annoying. It was a fucking lot. And, you know, good on them for, like, doing that homework at all. Because, I mean, there's been many a cases and true crime listeners are probably aware of this. Like, things did not get solved as easily or quickly because people did not talk. So, is this, when does that part happen? So I, in between this and them talking to Arthur Lee Allen. Yeah. So that part is a little bit later. 
Is it later? I it's can't ever later, remember. I just that, know I didn't. I forgot to. It's later because um, they talk about all the different parts or all the different crimes happening in California, and they're all from different departments, and they're all from different counties. And there's one guy, just like the guy from SVU, is from Napa. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure. Uh, Mullinax is the one for the high school kids in the beginning, and then. The Presidio Heights taxi driver is San Francisco. Is San Francisco, which is Tosky. So they're all technically working different cases, but they are pretty sure it's the same killer. They're like it's connected. They're all together. And then this one name comes up right? amongst several. So now we're in 1971, and to- Tosky is it Tosky, right? Yeah. Yes. One second, though. When we go back, does it have the year there before 1971? Oh no! Oh nope. wow! Yeah, so sixty nine. Yeah, so, so like, still like sixty nine through seventy. They get Here. all these like fucking letters and shit. In lots between of letters, the time. lots of things happening. In between them connecting Arthur Lee Allen to the case at all, they get all these fucking weird like letters and shit. And he's be he be sending more and more frequently, and that was really weird because like, you know, he wasn't sending so much before, right? He was sending like three in a year or whatever. And they're like, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyway, in 1971, uh, Toski, Armstrong, and Mullinax uh, question a suspect in the Vallejo case, uh, which is the two teenagers in the car that get shot. Um, Arthur Lee Allen is the suspect, and they notice he wears a Zodiac wristwatch. Um, with the same logo as the killer. Um, however, a handwriting ex- expert insists that Alan did not write the letters, despite him being ambidextrous. Which was so weird, right? Like, that whole... It was an interview, right? So, like, Molinax and the two investigators go to this guy's job. And they're like, so what? what, what is this about your life? And then, you know, they're all looking at him. They look at his watch and they see it's a Zodiac brand and they're like, (gasps) and then they're like, so what's this about you being ambidextrous? And he's like, I don't know anything about that. I'm not very good at it. And it's like, we didn't say they weren't. And then it was just very circumstantial was the word, right? And it was just so annoying to me because I'm like, they got him, boys. You know, they got him. It was just not enough hard evidence to really lock this guy away. And it was frustrating. That was the most probably frustrating part of the movie is like they had a lead. But they couldn't nab him. Well, they couldn't get uh, like a warrant. They didn't have enough stuff to get a warrant to, concrete s- stuff. S- to search his house. Which is fair because, you know, on one end. But still, you're like, oof. Um, so back to Paul Avery. Uh, he receives a letter threatening his life, uh, which causes him to become paranoid and he starts turning to drugs and alcohol. Goodbye, Ascot. Boo. Boo. Um, the Don't case do is. Drugs. Yeah. D, I won't do drugs. A, I will have. <laughs> <D>. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Wait, what's the rest of it? I want to know. R, I will respect myself. And E, I will educate me. That's that what we right. didn't get. That's what we didn't get at the trivia night, Sky. What does dare mean? I thought we got that one. Oh, I certainly did not. I thought we did. No. <laughs> I don't just, think he just sang the song. I trust him. He sang a song. That's the song though. That's the song. Yeah. The Dare song. Do they even have the Dare program? Still? Probably not. Man, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I don't I'm not in the school system. I won't say it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was really sad. He really did turn from like a cool, crazy journalist guy to being like what did, you, what did you say about me? So No, we did get it. It was drug abuse resistance education is what D.A.R.E. stands for. So we did get that. This, that's the song, though. I do know the song. Oh, just kidding. They should have had the actual words in there. Oh, like in the song? Like it, like, Yeah, like Antonio was just singing. Because it didn't say resistance. He said respect myself for R. Well, yeah, because that that's the that, song. That was the song. But what the I D.A.R.E. I was part of the cult, guys. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> Oops. They uh, would give us candy when we got the right answer. So I was like, this is cool. Doing earth. drugs isn't cool. <laughs> I grew up like on the north side of town and that was the not so cute part of town. So how the fuck did I not get into dare? And then you guys did. 
Were you guys more prone to getting the drugs? I think, I, I, I think they just considered a lost cause and just didn't bother. That is so interesting because North Las Vegas is known for its not so cuteness. Yeah, it's a lost cause. The <laughs> ghetto, as Elvis writ, wrote. No, there are nice areas <laughs> of North Las Vegas, as people like to tell me. Will I visit them? Most no, never. Not. You would never cross into North Las Vegas boundaries of your own accord. You're as far as I go north. And I thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for your service. <laughs> All right. So the case is Noriety weighs on Toski, who can't even sit through a special showing um, of Dirty Harry, which apparently is loosely based on the case, which I didn't know. And I don't think any of us knew. I, I only had read that in looking over the true crime details. Mm -hmm. There was another movie that it was, um, this was like loosely based off of as well. But yeah, this is the one that appeared in the movie. How do you feel about that, Antonio? I've never seen Dirty Harry, so I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Clint Cute. Eastwood is in it. I did know that about Dirty Harry, and that's about it. And now I know that uh, Dirty Harry is uh, based off the Zodiac. I want to know So what if we about. ever watch Dirty Harry, we're just going to clip that out of this episode and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, now I'm going to talk about that part. So the part that I was talking about when I was like trauma mama, which is a part that's always stuck out to me. And also Antonio, we've talked about this part extensively. Did I miss it? No, you no, did not miss it. You just didn't get the gravitas, I think. Okay. It was a lot, dude. I remember watching this first time and I was like, ah. <laughs> so it's when the lady is driving and she gets pulled over by another person. And he's like, oh. oh, your back tire's loose. I can tighten it for you. And she's like, okay. And he tightens it up, quote unquote, and then is like, okay, you're good. And she starts driving and it ends up becoming more loose and falls off and she has to pull over again. But lucky enough, that guy's still there and he's like, oh, oh I guess it's worse than we thought. I can give you a lift though. <laughs> and she pull and she has a baby with her, which I think is also terrifying. Oh, you got a baby? And she's like, is that a problem? And he's like, nar. Yeah, so they start driving, um, and she starts noticing that he's passing by. Stops. I th I thought you were gonna leave me at the the fill station. He's like, N no, I'm, I'm no gonna kill you. And he's like, ah, before I kill you though, I'm gonna throw your kid out the window. <laughs> and then it fades to black. And then we start. We see another person driving up, and a truck's pulled over, and this the lady's like now screaming and hysterical and. The car pulls over and it's a random lady Flailing at and the side just of the trying to see what's going on. And the lady's just like, what is she yelling? Help my baby or something. Help me find no, my baby or something. No, not help, help my baby. No, she's what not saying she say? that. She says, um, they say that she jumped out of the car. Yeah. And uh, she's like, he was going to kill me. He was going to kill me. And then, oh, my baby, my baby. And so she goes over and she pulls her baby out of a... Um, out of the call? weeds. Out of the weeds. And she's and they were like, oh, you hid your baby. Because I was, I always thought that she like threw her own baby out the car. I did too. But now. After no, she just jumped with her baby. She just jumped with her baby and hid the baby just in case. He came That's back. That's insane. And also, that was rough. <laughs> yes. Now I'm like vividly remembering that because I was very uncomfortable and unsettled by that. I also don't like the word hysterical because I know like the root word of it is like hysterics. And that's like a bad, not good word to me. Because they used to use that word when women were being uh, women were being hysterical in like the olden days of male doctors only, and they were like, "Oh, she's hysterical. The only way to like relieve her is like through orgasms or whatever." Oh well, that's I hate it's, using uh, that. It's to do with like the generals because like hysterectomy, hysterical, hysterics. I hate that word, and I'll just like leave that with you guys as my uh, maybe something you didn't know about me because I think Antoine was saying in the theater too like or in the movie in don't worry darling they said hysterical and i was like i fucking hate that word like, oh. shut the fuck up dude and it was the doctor of course saying that to the woman oh, i didn't know that anyway a uh, bit of education for you guys but yeah that was a really really fucking rough like I, I don't think it really clicked for me that maybe she like had rolled out with her baby and she's like what it didn't uh, actually because yeah. it's a like a hard cut there so you don't see that. There's no action scene you, where she like. You think. But you think he's about to kill her and she's going to die. But turns out she was not killed. I wonder where that baby is now, though. Mm. God, I hope you're alive and well somewhere. I would think so. 
Eh, maybe. That was 70... Somewhere between 71 and 78. Yep. Good, good gracious. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's 1978 now. Hello. Avery has moved to the Sacramento Bee, so that's a different publication. And then Gray Smith, who is Jake Gyllenhaal, persistently contacts Toski and eventually impresses him with his knowledge about the case. So he's like just coming up to him all the time. And then he's like, fine, fine, fine. And Toski's like, um, I can't give you direct access to stuff, but he gives him names. And so he goes to other departments, other police departments where other murders occurred and he seeks information from there. And then at this point, we see Jake Gyllenhaal like running back and forth, like, collecting info, which is very impressive to me, honestly, because I'm like the sleuthing involved in that again in the 70s. I thought that was impressive. You know, that's a lot of like follow up and like, you know, it's a lot of running around and driving around. And he has a family like remember in the beginning, we didn't talk about this in the beginning. Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Robert Graysmith, is a single dad with a son. I think he has two kids, actually. And he is, like, divorced, so he has one kid in the beginning who ate his minty toothpaste that I hated. And I'm like, you should have made him barf, but I don't know. Anyway, um, then he meets somebody else, who it's, which is Chloe Sevigny, who maybe we don't even talk about the rest of this whole thing, but she was there. And she was the love interest, and then they have a kid. Um, but yeah, like, he's trying to, like, you know, seek all of this stuff out while he has a family, almost destroying his family. Um... And then Toski, also in the meantime, he's still pursuing the case, but his partner's like, look, I- I'm transferring out. Tomorrow's my last day. And he's like, yo, what the fuck? And then he's like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. He's like, I want to watch my kids grow up. And I'm like, that's sad. <laughs> so Toski himself is demoted for purposefully forging a Zodiac letter. Supposedly. Supposedly. And I don't think I caught that. I don't think I caught that. I don't think anyone actually, like, you know, showed that they just there was a random letter popped up, and then it was like, "Oh, Zodiac's back!" This guy must have forged it to drum up publicity, and that was just like, it was a weird cut. Some of the cut sequences here are just like, mm, just like, boop. There you go. This is what happened. As a person watching it for the first time, it was really hard to follow some of the things because the time of sequence. I think they did a really good job though of like oh, yeah, keeping 100%. it together. Chronologically, but- it's great, but like some of the info has to be inferred way too often around here. I can agree with that. But yeah, so he's demoted. <laughs> wah, wah. And so Robert Jake Gyllenhaal continues his own investigation and is profiled in the Chronicle and gives a tele interview about the book and his writing uh, about the case. And then he starts getting phone calls. And, you know, in the meantime, we had discovered at, by this point that um, the Zodiac killer was like, giving phone calls to people like even paul avery and going (sighs) and i'm like oh no as soon as i was like not heavy breathing and then i'm just like oh no no and he starts getting heavy breathing phone calls Ah, i can't stand it i could never so because of his obsession robert loses his job and his family because he's upset and he finds circumstantial circumstantial evidence that points to Arthur Lee Allen being the Zodiac. But still, there's no physical evidence to, you know, well, put. They kind of breeze past this, but a, a small portion of, like, the menacing comes right before that. He goes on this whole tangent about a person who's never seen or alluded to, but talked about by name is a Rick Marshall and how... Rick Marshall is Napa County guy's, like, favorite suspect in the case. He's the only person that hasn't been cleared from handwriting. And there's a thing about the posters and, like, oh, I just need one more sample. And the guy's like, and he meets someone who supposedly knows Rick Marshall or was holding, taking care of something for Rick Marshall. Um, Bob Vaughn. Yeah. Yes. Bob Vaughn. Mm-hmm. That's and where like, I fell asleep. That is where you <laughs> fell asleep. And, like, Bavon's like, Rick Marshall did not do those posters. I did. That's my handwriting. And it freaks out um, Gray Smith. And like, was Bavon a suspect? Or is this just part of the movie? Or Let's what? not forget that he was in his home. I do remember that part. Suddenly he was in this man's home. And suddenly he was in this man's basement. And suddenly there was tea being made upstairs. So he's like, I gotta go. The tea kettle starts going off and he starts rattling the door. Like black phone style. And he's like, I can't get out. And I'm like, ah. 
that's when I woke up and I'm like waking up the worst part. But tis a red herring, I guess. All right. Uh, so eight years later, after Robert's book titled Zodiac, which is super creative, um, has become a bestseller. Mike, from the beginning, from the July 4th, uh, 1969 attack, identifies Alan from a police mugshot. But after the movie, there's little like text epilogue that indicates that Alan died before the police could question him. And the case remains open. Which is so upsetty spaghetti. I cannot even believe that. And I don't think we mentioned this, but Mike... Throughout all of Robert's, like, research and stuff, Mike, who was the first person we saw in the beginning, uh, with, um, what's her face? Darlene. Darlene! Like, he just disappears off the face of the earth. He's, like, cleared from the hospital, and he's like, bye. And that's why they couldn't really get any more information out of him. This was the only man to have seen the Zodiac's face. Mm -hmm. And then he is here at the end saying... It's this guy, and it's uh, Lee, and it's just kind of fucking insane. It left so much unopen. What is it? Open endedness. Mm -hmm. I can't. It hurts, but also you should never like you know, tighten, button up stuff that you're not really sure about. That's the whole point of uh, the criminal justice system. Dun dun. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Worth a watch. I know I felt I know I said I fell asleep. <laughs> but that was because I was sleepy and I had tequila. Um, but it's definitely worth a watch, yes. Although I had like, you know, falling asleep at that Bob Vaughn part. It was definitely exciting through and through. There was so much going on. And again, chronologically, really, really nice. I like the way that they pieced everything together mm -hmm. of sequence of events. And it's a little hard to believe, but you see it in the fashion and the way that things change, that how the characters age a little bit. How it went from 1969 to like 90, right? 91. 91, which is like insane, you know? Like you see um, Mike as a, as a kid, as a teen, and then you see him in his grown-up version self. And you could just like imagine how much time has passed by yet this man robert kept his obsession like you know going and then he managed to like you know make a whole story out of it which was crazy cool and exciting but like at the end of it all it still was unsolved and mm -hmm. it's very like ick and it touched a lot of people's lives and it really made just you know in the real world aspect of it thinking about it how bad it is that there was no interdepartmental communication between counties but it was it was good. It was very eye opening for that. I think we all realized that you know after the fact, like hindsight's twenty twenty, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But that's just just wild to see because it's like frustrating. It's like why couldn't you call them? And it's like because they didn't want to reveal information about open cases to you, even though you're on the same level of policing. Mm -hmm. Stupid. But yeah, it was definitely worth a watch. Like <laughs> it was really long. It was, it was really a very long. long movie. It's two hours and thirty seven minutes. But it was it's worth a, long a watch. Movie. And I took my nap at the best time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Solid huh? cast. What? Hot cast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about that Mark Ruffalo butt. That Mark Ruffalo butt and he's walking away in those uh check pants. Yeah, it was like checkered. Checkered pants. Um that was nice. Oh, I mean, it, it surely was, it was, was nice. I and think we both were just like Bye -bye. nice, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, hate to hate to see you leave, but love to watch you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robert Downey Jr. when he was wearing his ascot, yes, very cute. Jake is Gyllenhaal. He's got these spooky bug eyes that are still <laughs> He's sleepy. He's got those boy. bright eyes, but he had good hair. He had very good hair in this film. Mark Ruffalo it. in a rope, getting up out of bed. That was nice too. Do you see his underwear? Yeah. Do you see that bulge? Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Oh my god! So scrummy. It's giving me a uh, eternal sunshine of a spotless mind again, dancing around on top of Jim Carrey's body in the bed <laughs> <laughs> with Kirsten Dunst. Hello. That was only three down. years prior. Oh, yeah, that was 2004. Was that 2004? Mm -hmm. I thought it was 2005. Delicious. Cute. Mm. It could be wrong. Arf. Arf. 
Uh, <laughs> soundtrack and score. Uh, hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy. I love the soundtrack for this movie. I, I didn't really song. notice the score. Me neither. I don't think I noticed it. I don't notice the score <laughs> either, but I do love Hurdy Gurdy Man because I did of this like movie. That. I'm glad that they did that as a callback. You know, it happened in the beginning. And yeah, I know, actually never. Like, I didn't know it was in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but I do. I do remember the first time I had seen this movie, or the first time I had paid attention to this movie. It came in at the end. I was like, "This is a nice song." It's a very eerie song. It right? is. Sure is. So I mean, I, I guess you know, I wouldn't say that I heard a lot of soundtrack in it exactly, except for you know that one iconic song that played in the beginning and the end. But I mean, if I if I also didn't realize it, it must have been good sounds and songs. So I, I should look up the soundtrack later because I really just can't even identify anything in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, Decent. Costume, design, set design, location, ascot. Uh, always. Everything. Ascot. Checkered pants. Checkered pants. Underwear bulge. Uh, Hair. Holster. Hair. Holsters. <laughs> you love a good holster. I do. Love a good holster. See the mummy. Uh, um, set design is just you know, I like San it. Fran. It's just San Fran. Yeah. It, it was very San Fran, and like um, a lot of the you know that's like my era of uh, design. And then I pointed out that vase in the background that's worth like probably like two hundred dollars plus. That's the expensive vase. I thought you were gonna tell me something else. I gotta look up a picture and show you guys. One of my my cousin's cousin who has a vintage store. She actually found one, and I think it's like Ellie Smith. Or I could be wrong. Um, and then she like priced it at like $180 and I was just like, whoa. And it was a tiny vase. It was very small, but it had that like iconic, like, like drippy, like, you know, top part of it, mm-hmm. you know, and I got to look it up. I got to show you guys, but that was very cool. I also like the outfits a lot. Me it's like a thousand dollars. I'm sure at this point she was just selling a teeny tiny one, but that was very cool. I liked all of the design and whatnot, even like. Uh, Robert Gray Smith's house. I think it was like an apartment, but it was like really cool. Very cute. And uh, Chloe Sevigny, even though she was in like for two seconds. <laughs> I like her little outfits. They were cute. So 70s. Um, set design. One of the ones that was really like disturbing was. Uh, oh, his trailer. Yeah, his trailer. I was like, oh, that's scary. Oh, Big the scary. squirrel trailer. <laughs> squirrel trailer. <laughs> squirrel Mama. shack. Hmm. Did they have a warrant to search his place? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause I'm they like, were able to hmm. search the trailer. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. They did work towards that. They were like, how can we get this? Man, those squirrels. The one in the cage, I was like. I don't know why your friends are allowed just anywhere they want to be, but you're in the cage. Mm. So, hey, some of them were more lucky than that guy because they ended up in the freezer. That's. And that's uh, serial killer one out of three things. Yeah. Do you remember Seven Psychopaths and how they like portrayed Zodiac as someone who loved bunnies? They were really close with squirrels here. <laughs> oh. Also, the three thingies that make you a serial killer are wetting the bed, um, harming small animals, and then I th- think something else. Trauma to the head. Yeah. You're welcome. Huh. Cool. Uh, if you know somebody that has all of those things or a couple of those things, maybe the like, police to this age and to this day and age like what in the better like when they were a kid when they were a kid yeah yeah Holy think, shit, think you about your somebody? favorite <laughs> think about your favorite serial killers <laughs> no um what was another set design uh lake sides are scary lake sides are scary you're Dude. talking about the lake berry berry the lake berry acid incident i was like yeah. watching it and i was like that water don't look real <laughs> It looks so surreal and beautiful, and it looks so cute to be there, like, and have a picnic, you know, and be a couple and do but coupley like things. That. Not like but that, like, mama. Not like people died. They <laughs> surely it's, did. Died. It's like fucking creep all over again. It's just a beautiful <laughs> day by the lake. Yeah. La la la. Axe to the head. I just public, public lakes only, where there are lots of people around. I mean, hey, uh, Ted Bundy still managed to get people to follow him in his uh, very, very busy lake times. So I don't know enough of the, enough about that. Yeah, I bet some of our listeners do. Hello, hello, true crime listeners. I am not. One well, of you. but but that's the thing. We're not we're not dumb though. Like if someone came up and was like, "Oh, my arm's broken. I need help getting my boat off," I'd be like, "Okay." 
Good luck. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this was the seventies. Uh, they didn't know that murderers were at every corner. They left their doors unlocked. It's too much. Yeah, we'll go to crowded lakes. Crowded lakes only. This is why you guys don't go camping. I would never go camping. This guy I, would never go I don't camping. think I can do it. I, I like to go camping. Clamping only for me. Even then, I'm always like ready to fucking throw hands. Clamping, um, and I have like a flight plan filed away with like three different people. <laughs> uh, favorite quotes? Um, I had one, and I thought it was funny. Can't remember it. Because it was so long ago. I know, my yeah. God, this movie was so long. I'm pretty sure I had one yeah. at least. And I was like, ha, that was great. Yeah, I can't remember what it, it was. It was at the beginning. Oh, one I liked the, when they're interviewing all these people. Because, you know, when they're asking the public for any leads on the Zodiac Killer, you know, everyone and their mother comes out and is like, my uncle's the Zodiac and all that kind of <laughs> shit. The one lady that's like, have you thought about... um Paul Avery being the Zodiac Killer and Mark Ruffles characters like frequently. <laughs> that made me laugh. That is kind of funny. I can't remember what mine is. I can't identify one. So I guess, you know, not as memorably quoted as uh, one would think. Good that watch. That was funny. I just cannot tell you what it was. I probably have to watch the first hour again. Was it the the nickname thing? I don't think so. Because you laughed at I that. I did laugh at that. I would laugh at that. When he asked Robert Denny Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, no. <laughs> um, as the loser of this episode, Dolly, do you think this movie's worth all the hype it has received? Um, I think it was definitely worth the watch for sure. Worth all the hype. Now let me tell you, it was a long movie. I'm not saying that you could have condensed it anymore because I feel like, again, they went perfectly well with the timelines, but worth the hype? I mean, it's definitely a one-time watch movie for me. I probably won't watch it again because I ar already knew the true crime. And then watching the story unfold was actually very entertaining. But it's but, a one and done, like, Yeah, movie. but worth the hype, like, I think I probably could have gone even more years without watching it and been like, oh, it's still pretty good, but still feel the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I do like the storytelling. I think that's the most masterful part of this entire movie is, like, yeah, you might know the story, but here it is laid out in a way that is like very easily digestible and like entertaining and like shows you, you know, what had happened. I'm sure it was like not like perfectly like, you know, word for word type of shit because it's Hollywood, you know. But I, I like the I like the fact that they put like little red herrings. I like that they told the details. I thought it was a bit gruesome that they did put like, you know, the stabbings and stuff. And I was like, that's that's rough. The graphics for it. Yeah. Like I, I thought that it was masterfully done. I think it was very, like, it was really, really nice to watch it. Like, cinnamon toast, crunch-wise, like, I liked it. A I lot think it'd be cool to see it if it was, like, a lot of good what, scenes. like, remade in 4K. Yeah, I do, too. I think that would be a really cool, like, David Fincher do. makes good movies. Yeah, by no means am I saying this is not a good movie. This is a, a fantastic film. Like, again, beautifully masterfully telling a story it's i think it's one of the that feels like a movie i think it's one of the better true crime movies it kind of just gives you the facts harry styles' quote is never gonna die is it <laughs> not <laughs> no me. probably not you're right though because you know there's again we were talking about this in the beginning how like you know maybe like you know some true crime stories are being retold right now and it's not hitting the mark or it's just missing the mark yeah but I lots mean, of things just hit miss the mark anyways true we all know the stories these are just different interpretations and truthfully they really just belong to the director and the producer for how it's going to be told but i think that this was awesome i think it was masterfully made worth the hype i don't think so but definitely worth a watch absolutely i think it was a great film cute i'd recommend it I'd be like, oh, y'all haven't seen Zodiac? But then I'm just like, that guy who hasn't seen Zodiac this entire time. When was it made? 2007? Well, now you can join that. It's been 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Delicious. I mean, hey, I'd watch it again to see that ass. Oh, my God. That's it. <laughs> That's that on that. <laughs> And that concludes this episode of Sit Down Loser. We're watching a movie. Catch you guys next time. Bye, losers. Or you won't catch us because we're the Zodiac Killer.
<laughs> Ted Cruz, watch out. 